What's up jammers, it's Brandino Jam 24 with some exciting news. I've been working on an upgraded conversion kit for the Electric XP 3.0. Links to this kit and other tools used in this video will be in the description below. On my first test ride using the power from the stock 48 volt electric battery. It has quicker acceleration right off the line, but we are waiting on a custom 72 volt battery to arrive to really test the capability of this new build. While we wait for that battery to arrive, here is part one of my electric XP 3.0 72 volt 2000 watt full hydraulic tutorial. I am not an expert by any means and there's many ways to do this conversion, but I will be explaining the way I did this. This tutorial is made in a way so even the most novice bike mechanic can follow along. Begin with the bike upside down and deflate the rear tire as much as possible if you plan on reusing your tire and mounting it on the new 2000 watt wheel motor. Inspect the tire, have a tweezer handy and remove any debris. Move on to loosening the wheel nuts and watch out for the derailleur cage falling out. Remove the wheel nuts and washers. Put original parts away in a safe place for later. Use a hex key to loosen this bolt and remove another washer. Move over to the drive side and do the same. Return to the other side and clip the zip ties holding the motor rider onto the frame. Now you should be able to remove the rear wheel. A few washers will be found on the inside. Place those aside for now. Remove the new wheel from the packaging and loosen the wheel nuts. Remove the wheel nuts, washers, and put them aside. The new wheel does not have a rim liner, so I used electrical tape to cover the sharp edges of these spoke holes. Return to the electric wheel and use levers to remove the tire and inner tube. Remove more air out of the inner tube if necessary. Inflate and inspect the inner tube if you are reusing it. Deflate the inner tube and inspect the tire. Line up the new wheel and tire, making sure the rotation is correct on both. Insert the valve stem through the rim hole and work the inner tube into the tire. Then work the tire onto the rim. Reinflate the tire. 
The Electric XP 3.0 has an 11 28 tooth freewheel, which should be better against ghost pedaling than the larger freewheel in the kit. Here's how I transferred the freewheel. You will need a Park Tool FR-1.3 freewheel remover, link in the description. Insert the removal tool into the freewheel and use a wrench to loosen the freewheel, then place it aside. Removing a freewheel from a bike that's been used for a while can feel very difficult compared to a new wheel as it was here. A bit more leverage will be needed. Use a PVC pipe with an inner diameter that will fit over the handle of your wrench. Wrap the handle of your wrench for a tight fit inside the pipe. Clean the threads of the used freewheel and use a small bit of anti-seize lubricant. A small amount goes a long way. Install the freewheel back onto the wheel tightly. That's probably good right there. Flip the wheel over and unscrew the brake rotor screws, six in total. Clip the zip tie, holding the motor wires, and untangle the wires. Feed the wires through the center of the new rotor, making sure the correct side is facing up and matches the rotation of the wheel. Use blue Loctite on your rotor screws if they aren't already pre-treated with thread locker. This rotor measures 203 millimeters. It's basically an inch larger diameter than the stock electric rotor. Insert and tighten the rotor screws in a diagonal pattern. Port to four newton meters. Place the wheel aside. Grab a hex key or torque wrench to remove the bolt on the crank arm and place it aside. Use a crank puller tool to remove the crank arm. Be cautious and pay close attention not to cross thread and strip the crank arm. Use a flathead screwdriver to pry off the electric pass sensor. Clip off the zip ties holding the pass sensor onto the frame and place it aside. That will be enough for part 1 gents. I'll be working on editing the next video and waiting on the delivery of the custom 72 volt battery this week. Be sure to subscribe so you don't miss out on part 2. Adios!